Greetings, everyone. I want to discuss today the powerful new moon that we're moving into July 28th and how this will be associated with the powerful conjunction of Uranus, Mars, and the North Node in Taurus. They'll be moving into a five degree orb with each other starting on July 28th and then continue in that conjunction until August 9th. And Mars and Uranus will be exactly conjunct on August 1st. This is a very powerful period of time. So let's talk about the meaning of these energies and how we can work with them in the most conscious and effective way possible. Let me show you the chart. So this is showing you the chart at the top time of the new moon with the sun and moon in Leo, right next to the asteroid Ceres. Now, the sun and moon in Leo are really giving us the awareness that this new moon is about really being focused on coming from the heart, Leo. And it's significant that with Ceres close by, remember that one of the meanings of the asteroid series is our connection to our Earth Mother, to the Earth. So we're really being guided at the time of the new moon to connect with our hearts and be attuned to our deep connection with the Earth. I believe that that is getting echoed in the powerful triple conjunction of Mars, Uranus, and the North Node that are all occurring at that time. Taurus is the sign that is associated with the Earth. And we're in this ongoing powerful configuration with Uranus conjunct the North Node in Taurus. That's going to continue through until January of 2023. So it's really guiding us to get clarity about how we are in relationship with the earth, clarity about how we work with our resources, clarity about how we live in an embodied way in our daily lives. We're meant to be really looking at what's been in the shadows, what has been outside of our conscious awareness, bring that to the light of consciousness to guide us in moving into new forms. And remember that Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius, that age that we're moving into. So Uranus is giving us clarity, insight, helping us to break out of patterns from the past that no longer serve us, helping us to move in new directions. And I do believe Uranus conjunct the North Node in Taurus is giving us more and more insights also into how we've been out of balance in our relationship with the earth, how we're meant to come back into right relationship with the natural resources around us and with the earth herself. So it is a time when we're seeing increasing climate change, Uranus and Taurus, increasing clarity about the ways that we have been out of balance, and it's guiding us to move in new directions. And I do believe with this configuration now with Mars coming into contact with Uranus, it's showing us that we need to act in new ways, move in new directions, work with new sources of energy, really shift how we have been acting in relationship with the earth. You may be hearing a lot of predictions about this powerful conjunction that can activate fear. Some astrologers are gonna say this could lead to financial instability or abrupt shifts in financial markets. It also is leading to increasing incidents related to climate change. Uranus conjunct Mars can be abrupt disruptive events that may be occurring in the collective. All of these things are possible, but remember that how we engage with these energies shapes the form in which they'll manifest. 
And particularly in that the new moon is a time for setting intentions, being clear about the energies that you are aligning with to support what will manifest as we move towards the full moon. I would really encourage you to take time on July 28th, honor the energy of this new moon, tune into your heart. I would encourage you to meditate focused on breathing in and out of your heart and attuning to coming from a place of love, a place of compassion, and honoring with gratitude your deep connection with the earth. And then as you meditate and set those intentions to live from the heart, allow yourself to be guided in getting an intuitive sense of what actions you can take to move in new directions, to honor the shifts that we're in, to let your actions be in alignment with Uranus, the ruler of the age of Aquarius to be moving into right relationship with your body, with the earth, with all of the life around you. So allow your intentions to be for the highest possible manifestation of these profound energies that we're moving into. It's very profound also that the exact conjunction of Uranus and Mars will occur on August 1st. August 1st, Lamas, is an ancient sacred holiday that marks the midpoint between the summer solstice and the autumn equinox. So it is a time when the energies of light and dark are shifting. And it is a time when we are honoring the harvest of the earth, the energy of the sun bringing forth life from the earth here in the Northern hemisphere to honor the beauty and fruits and gifts of the earth. This is a time to be really coming from a place of gratitude for the earth and all of the gifts of the natural resources that feed us and sustain us. I also think it's very important to look at where this configuration is in the sky at the time of this conjunction. And let me show you that. So this powerful conjunction of Uranus and Mars and the North Node is actually taking place in the sky between the constellation of Cetus, the whale, and Perseus, the warrior. Now, I've talked in the past in, in previous YouTube videos about how powerful this part of the sky is. This area of the sky is known as being in the stare of Cetus. And it relates to the Greek story of Perseus, who has been sent on a mission to slay Medusa, the Gorgon. And he slays her and brings her head back as a trophy and encounters Andromeda, the maiden, chained to these rocks who he feels is being threatened by the great sea monster, Cetus. And so Perseus takes this head of Medusa. And remember, Medusa was able to, through her stare, turn anything into stone. So he turns this stare of Medusa at Cetus the whale to destroy the whale and rescue Andromeda, the maiden. And then he takes her with him. This is a story about the warrior who is at war with nature, who slays the whale, which is so symbolic of the wisdom of the deep, the wisdom of the natural world, 
the energy of the sacred feminine. So it can show the polarization that happens between the energies of the sacred masculine when we get caught in that idealization of the warrior, of war, of violence, of power over, and see nature is as either a threat, a danger to us, or something to be exploited. So this is a story of trauma and polarization and the disconnection between humanity and the natural world. And we're needing with this Uranus Mars North Node conjunction to see that pol polarization that we've been caught in, to see the folly of it. Uranus is the truth teller. It cuts through illusion. And Uranus is guiding us as we move into the age of Aquarius to rebalance the energies of the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine. Uranus is calling the warrior to step out of that idealization of power over, of exploitation, of the conflict with nature and disconnection from the natural world, to reclaim that awareness of the wisdom of the earth and of all the creatures of the earth, to realize that we are at one with the earth, that the earth is a part of us and we are a part of the earth. So Uranus is saying, see the truth of who you are and who we are in relationship with the earth. And Uranus is also calling us into a releasing of these past patterns of war, of violence, of power over, the idealization of the warrior, the idealization of Mars as the conqueror. Remember that Mars is now in the sign of Taurus. That's the sign ruled by Venus. This Integration of Mars in Taurus with Uranus is calling us to bring these energies of the masculine and feminine back into harmony and balance with each other. And it is about our ability then to honor Mars, our capacity to take action, to step out in the world, but to do it in a balanced way, to do it in a way that is in harmony with the natural world, not at war with our environment and not in a destructive way with the earth, but in a way that is about living in right relationship with the earth and her resources, and then living in right relationship with each other. If you go into the deeper layers of this story of Perseus and Andromeda, you realize that the story is about people who have been traumatized. Perseus and his mother were ousted by the king, his mother's father, for fear that he would grow, grow up and be a threat to his grandfather. The king had heard from the Oracle of Delphi that Perseus would someday kill him. So he put his daughter in imprisonment. And when she got pregnant through Zeus, he threw his daughter and his grandson out to sea, expecting them to die at sea. But they end up drifting to this island where Perseus is allowed to grow up and he becomes a young man and aspires to be a warrior and then is sent on this mission to slay Medusa by the king of the island who's now wanting to be in relationship with Perseus's mother and sees Perseus as a threat and so is sending him on a mission in hopes that he'll die and the king will have the mother to himself. So Perseus is constantly in this dynamic with these male father figures who are setting him up to fail 
are attempting to kill him. He is a victim of violence and abuse. He then encounters Andromeda, who's been chained to the rocks by her parents, who feel like somehow she is a threat to the people and calling these storms and imbalances from the sea to threaten their kingdom. So she is a victim of trauma and abuse. And you can see how in the story then, Perseus who slays Medusa, again, holding the wisdom of the ancient sacred feminine, then lashes out against Cetus, the whale. When we've experienced trauma, we tend to then become victims of that trauma and, or in danger of becoming perpetrators of trauma ourselves. The trauma gets passed on through our actions, our acting out, our reactivity, and then the trauma pattern just perpetuates. So this whole part of the sky is about trauma and how it can play out in ways that perpetuate harm, abuse, violation, destruction. And Uranus and Mars in the North Node are saying, see this clearly. Bring all of these patterns of abuse and pain and trauma out of the shadows, South Node in Scorpio, into the light of day and see with clarity that we can stop these patterns of violence and abuse and trauma. We can, in fact, heal and then come back into balance with each other, come back into an integration of the masculine and feminine from a healthy place, not from a traumatized pattern. And then we can come back into connection with the natural world. Again, not from a trauma pattern, but from a healthy pattern of living in harmony and in balance. So take time at this full moon. Meditate. Tune into your heart. Allow yourself to be aware of whatever trauma is there in you that's been in the shadows, that's been buried deep in the emotional part of yourself, Scorpio. Allow yourself to hold that in your consciousness. Hold those wounded parts of yourself with compassion in your heart. Allow yourself to bring those parts into healing, into awareness, so that you're not continually acting out of these painful patterns from the past. Then Uranus conjunct Mars can set you free to act in new ways that are coming from your true self and not from reactivity and trauma and the pain of the past. And then you're free to act in the world in a way that is just and true and in right relationship with everyone and everything around you. And then we together can be in right relationship with each other and with the earth to move into these new paradigms of the Aquarian age and to co-create a new earth together. Blessed be.